welcome everyone and thank you for attending the um, top tips for virtual job fairs. Um, we will be again recording this session. Um, let's do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, I would like everyone to please type in their major into the chat, um, what your major is in, in the chat area, please. Um, also, turn up your volume on your computers. Um, we will be playing a video later on in this session. Okay. Thank you. So hello and welcome to the top tips for virtual job fairs. My name is Emma Harris and I am with Career and Professional Development and I am your host today. I have with me today Rhonda Gifford, who is our director of CPDC, and Chrissy Doppelhauer, who is a, the assistant director and career coach for the STEM majors. So um, we would like to take this opportunity to um, welcome you to this session as we begin um, our top tips for virtual job fairs. So there are a lot of benefits for attending a job fair. Um, bear with me a second. I'm, I need to move things out of my way so I can see my screen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of benefits for attending a job fair. Um, and we have three virtual job fairs coming up um, this month. And they are Westpac's Job and Internship Fair, which is scheduled for March the 10th. We also have the Perk Job Fair, which is scheduled for March the 24th. And then we have the Social Human Services and Healthcare Profession Fair, which is scheduled for the 26th. So attending a job fair is a little different um, than attending a face-to-face -face fair. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it gives you an opportunity to meet um, a lot of hiring employers in one place. For instance, Westpac currently has 93 employers registered to attend that event. And of those 93 employers, 30 of those employers are looking for business majors, 28 for social and human services, 19 for public and communications, 12 for computer related majors, and then we have 17 looking for criminal justice majors. Again, you can go on to the Career Fair Plus app to see employers that are attending and what majors they are looking for, okay? Um, the Perk Fair currently has 150 employers registered. And then we have the Social um, Human Services um, Fair and Health Fair profession, which currently has 25 employers registered. So again, it's an opportunity to meet a lot of employers that are hiring in one place. Um, another benefit is a shorter time for commitment. So, you know, if you are in a face-to-face -face job fair, you know, you have a big room to work. Um, sometimes that can take an hour up to two hours and maybe longer. Um, like Westpac, like I said, has 93 employers. You might spend maybe half of your day there. Um, with a virtual job fair, um, you can target the employers that you want to meet and um, make sure that you um, meet with those employers, schedule um, a, either a group session or an individual session. Um, so for those of you who are shy or who are introverts, um, this might be a more comfortable uh, way to introduce yourself to um, employers by doing it um, virtually. As well as you can learn how to present yourself and your professional side. So it's an opportunity again for you to meet with employers um, and have a comfortable situation where you're talking one-on-one um, -on -one or just listening as part of a group. Um, and it opens up job opportunities and possibly you can land a job in job or an internship. So for those of you who are looking for either, this is a great opportunity. These are employers who are actively seeking Cal U students um, and looking to hire for jobs and internships. So how do you prepare for a job fair? Um, like I said earlier, um, the um, virtual fair is different than a face-to-face -face fair. So for those of you who are, who are thinking, oh, I just wanna go and browse around, well, you do that at a um, in-person job fair. For a virtual job fair, you wanna make sure that you um, schedule a group session or a one-on-one -on -one to meet employers. 
So um, that's important. And that's the difference between a face-to-face -face or a um, versus a virtual job fair. You also wanna do your research. So Rhonda's gonna to talk to uh, us a little bit about doing your research for a virtual job fair. Absolutely. Thanks, Emma. Um, I, I wanted to just reemphasize the point that Emma made uh, with virtual fairs. They're a little different in that you um, not just have to register for the fair, but you do have to schedule those sessions. So um, I had a request from, I think, a chemistry major earlier today who said, oh, I just want to go to the fair and I haven't signed up for anything yet. Um, so uh, you'll see there are different apps that each fair is using to get scheduled for those sessions for Westpac's and for PERC they're using an app called Career Fair Plus. So you'll want to download that app. And um, both of those apps have uh, a, a button where you can see what employers are attending. And you can filter by major or by the type of position that you're seeking. Maybe you're looking for an internship. Maybe you're looking for a full-time job. So I definitely recommend to go in on the, those apps. Um, uh, for the Social and Human Services Fair, that is actually co-hosted by Clarion University and Cal U and Edinburgh, um, we are using Handshake. So more of you may be familiar with Handshake because that's something that our campus has already used. So same thing, you can go in, you can search for employers and filter. Um, one thing that I would definitely recommend, um, some fairs, when employers register, it may ask them what majors are you looking for? And some of them may say, we're looking for all majors. They'll just check that box. So I would encourage you, um, even if you see a list of organizations pop up for your major, take the next step in your research and actually click on the employer names, click to their website, really get a good feel of what they're looking for, that they are indeed um, of interest to you. And they're not just an employer that said, hey, we'll hire any major. And that's not to say that you might not be interested in them, but we wanna make sure when you go to the fair, you know what that organization does, what types of positions they're offering right now and why they're of interest to you. So that especially when you're in those one on one sessions, if they ask you, so what do you know about us or why are you interested in us? You've done that little bit of research and you're able to answer that question and say, yeah, I really am interested. This is what I saw on your website that appealed to me. Um, and here's some questions I'd have. I I'd like to know more. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, we would also like you to make sure that to be to be prepared that you have your resume ready. So you should update your resume and upload your resume onto Handshake. And we're gonna ask you to upload your, uh, um, update your Handshake profile as well. So resumes that are uploaded onto Handshake, we try to critique them within 48 hours. So um, we were going to ask you to please um, upload that resume so we can get it critiqued and you can get it ready so you can have it um, as you submit your resume to employers um, that you might meet during the fair. We're gonna ask you to practice your elevator pitch. So um, you should be able to tell an employer about yourself um, in 30 seconds, um, what you're interested in and why you're interested in their company. So in 30 seconds. So if you need help developing an elevator pitch or um, you want to practice your elevator pitch, please schedule an appointment to meet with your career coach and we will be happy to assist you with that. Um, we are going to ask you to make a list of questions. So if you've done your research, you might have some questions that you might want to ask the employer. And we're gonna ask you to write those down so you don't forget about um, those questions um, and be able to get those questions answered. Um, and we're gonna ask you to check your tech. Um, so uh, check your technology, make sure that your internet is working properly, that your computer is working properly, that your volume is working properly. Um, so um, please do that. Um, that will help you prepare for um, your virtual um, fair um, and being ready. Um, so you'll see the note, little note here, set your handshake privacy settings to community if you're participating in group sessions. Um, and your work authorization settings. So we're gonna ask you to do that as well. 
Another thing, during and after the fair, you want to make sure that you are dressing professionally. So dress business casual or professional, at least from the waist up. Um, you'll hear our employer joke about that. Um, we have a little session um, that we're going to be including uh, where we interviewed an employer who's going to be, talk to you a little bit about some tips. So at least from the top up, make sure that you are dressed professionally. Um, use your laptop or computer versus your phone if possible. Um, choose a quiet space and be mindful of your background and lighting um, as you prepare for the um, sessions that you are going to be encountering with the employer. And please arrive on time. So arriving on time means at least five minutes early, um, you know, just in case you do have some technical problems, you are able to um, you know, have those worked out. So 10 to five minutes early would be appropriate. Um, just like um, if you were in person or doing an in-person interview, you want to make sure you are making proper eye contact um, and you are actively listening um, to the employer. Um, so that's important as well. And make sure you have a notebook and pen nearby so you can take notes. This might prompt you to ask questions later on to the employer or um, again, research their company and find out some other information that you think is relevant as you make your decision about the employer. And remember to ask questions. I always like to tell um, our students to pre pre prepare at least three to five questions to ask an employer. You might not get an opportunity to ask all of those questions, but again, it indicates that you're interested in that employer just as much as they are interested in you. Um, in group sessions, you again, there might be a lot of people who are asking questions, but at least you have an opportunity in the virtual session to put those questions in a chat so the employer um, will have an opportunity to respond. And then we're gonna ask you to follow up with the employer because that's important. You know, after you meet an employer in a um, interview, um, it is very important that you connect afterwards. Again, it demonstrates that you're interested in that employer um, and that um, you are um, willing to take further steps to, to make sure that you are meeting that employer's needs as well. So we do have um, an employer. So an inside scoop from an employer, the employer you're going to be um, hearing today. Her name is Kelly Dillard and she is with Allegheny County DHS. So at this time, please turn up your volume because it is kind of low. and welcome to the virtual job fair tips workshop. My name is Emma Harris and I am with the Career and Professional Development Center here at California University PA and I am the career coach for arts, languages, communications, public and human services, as well as exploratory study students. In addition to my role as a career coach, I'm also the coordinator for the Career Advantage Pathway which was designed to help students like you gain a career advantage by preparing you to be career ready upon graduation. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Kelly Diller, and Kelly is with Allegheny County DHS. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today. So I'm gonna begin with a few questions. Tell me a little bit about yourself and the role that you're, you play in your organization. Um, my name is Kelly Dillard, and I am the Talent Acquisition Engagement and Retention Manager at Allegheny County Department of Human Services. Um, and this is a new role for me. I'm just kind of transitioning into this role as of uh, maybe a week ago. Um, just prior to that, I was a talent, in, uh, in talent acquisition manager, right? More so around recruitment and, and also the movement of positions internally at DHS. But in this new function, um, when we think about engagement, you know, um, engagement of all pipelines. So whether that is internal movement, you know, for our staff who are here, who we want to keep on board, and who may have aspirations to move into higher positions in leadership and time with partners and services, as well as those external pipelines of folks like yourself, students and individuals who might be um, changing careers as we make career and looking for work inside of DHS. So my responsibilities are around managing those pipelines, 
um, being as forward facing to the college community and to the community at large as possible. So I can talk to you guys about opportunities in Vietnam and why you should do them. Well, thank you. Um, what do you recommend that students do to prepare for a virtual job fair? Yeah, um, this virtual stuff, it's such a strange world and I keep hoping that it will go away, honestly. <laughs> um, I very much prefer in person. <laughs> So I knew that was going to happen. I have a very territorial chihuahua. Um, and anytime Amazon comes or the mail person comes, she is like five pounds, but she must make herself my favorite. So I, it'll probably happen again, so I'm so, so sorry. Um, but how do students, um, how do students prepare for this virtual experience? Um, for me, I'd like to go into a session with a student who has done a little bit of research Right, you know, we know that you guys are busy, you got a lot on your plates. We know that you're probably meeting multiple employers. So I don't expect that you spend hours, you know, uh, visiting our website and, and learn about us. Like maybe you would prepare for an actual job interview. Um, but I do really appreciate um, the student that comes on and knows who we are. You know, um, I can certainly give a description of who we are and and how we might be a fit for what we are looking for. But I appreciate when a student says, you know, I was on your website and I saw this. So definitely visiting the website. And then important for me too is um, when a student is able to correlate their experience in or major with the work that we do, right? You know, I can do it, but sometimes I get thrown. Every career fair I get thrown, you know, someone will say, you know, I'm, I'm studying marine biology. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, and then I'm stuck with thinking about how that is a match for us in human services where there's no water and there's no, you know, animal population or whatnot. Um, so if you can come to the interview, you know, having taken a look at us, seeing who we are, just at least who our, what our mission is um, and the kind of population that we serve and then being able to correlate you know, your degree type with maybe uh, jobs that you've seen on our website or um, some direction that you might want to take in your career that would be great. You know, a student um, who's um, studying nutrition might not necessarily feel like a fit for human services, but we have an internship in, um, I think it's called a Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. So that makes perfect sense for a student, you know, who's interested in nutrition and working with seniors. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. So to be able to share that kind of thing with us would be great. Do you think um, students having an elevator pitch is important? Yeah, um, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm interested in the elevator pitch, um, maybe telling you something that your resume doesn't necessarily, because I do try to visit the student profiles that are on um, handshake, right? And that's your resume for the most part. Some students are really more um, communicative in those profiles, um, but the more you can tell me about yourself, the better, right? So especially about what you what you believe your career path um, to be at, at this moment in time. You know, you're graduating senior. I'm very much interested in this type of work. Um, I also have an interest in these things because you never know when a recruiter is able to kind of piece something together that. Oh, you know, well, this might be a fit for you if you like this kind of work. So we know that if we were in person, um, what a student wears to a job fair is very important. Is it equally as important as to what they would wear to a virtual job fair? You know what? Um, I'm always impressed when students come, you know, they've got a suit on, or you never know if they've got boxer shorts on the bottom and a suit on the top. <laughs> <laughs> that's always, you know, did you go the whole way or did you know what I mean? So that's always a, a little laugh I have in the back of my mind when I'm having these conversations. But I'm always impressed when a student comes dressed in these things. Um, but I will say, um, no pressure, right? I, I, I certainly wouldn't uh, detract point or, or take notes negatively if a student just, you know, had on a white shirt or, um, you know, something very basic. Um, it, it, I think, like you pointed out, the in-person experiences um, are sometimes when, you know, you might raise an eyebrow, like, ooh, those are pajamas. Um, 
you know, and I've seen it all, believe me, at these recruitment events. Um, if I could share a tidbit for when we return to normal and we are in person, make the investment in at least one interview outfit, one recruitment event outfit. You know, we get sometimes to get these refunds, and it is that is a, a very good way to spend some of your refund money or um, whatnot. Um, invest in uh, a nice business casual um, dress for young women um, and women also, a nice fit and heel. Sometimes I see the foreign heels that look a little not necessarily career fair ready. But nonetheless, you know, we'll still engage with you and we'll still invite you to an interview because you're amazing. But, you know, make the investment because I think you'll find that's worth it. You'll feel far more comfortable in front of a, a panelist or a business career um, in a two inch kitten heel as opposed to a four inch stiletto because um, that's all you have. You know? But that's just my. <laughs> I get you. I get you. So, what else can students do to make a good impression? Um, I think when students are naturally inquisitive about the recruiter themselves, it sparks a lot of interest in conversation. You know, so when students are interested in how you got to your position, and you know, and, and you have some time, because sometimes there's not time because they're talking to something they got roles. But when a student says, you know, so how long have you been in DHS? Or, you know, what was your career path that led you to this role? Um, I think it's one, it's nice for us to look for you to take a break and, and say, oh, okay, you know, because we're more than willing to share our experiences. Um, but I think there's a learning um, piece to that conversation as well, um, because sometimes students put a lot of pressure on themselves to know exactly what you want to do. Um, and, and see the trajectory as this way, always, right? And I would tell my son, you know, when he was 19, 20, I would say, you know, you are not expected to have your life figured out at 19. I didn't have my life figured out at 19, but by listening to others' stories on how, you know, they went out of undergraduate school and, you know, kicked around a couple jobs or, you know, landed what they thought would be the perfect job, which really wasn't, that led them on different paths. Um, I think that it sometimes can put you at ease, knowing that the path isn't always phew. The path can sometimes be straight, you know, can be bumpy. You might have to take a couple steps back to really find your direction, um, and not put so much pressure on yourself around, you know, having had it all mapped out. Um, you know, once you turn that castle from one side to the other side. Now, being in this virtual environment, <clears throat> we know that you know we're using a lot of Zoom. Do you pay attention to the background the students um, are typically in, or should they be paying attention to their background um, as they conduct a, um, a Zoom appointment? Um, and is um, eye contact equally as important when you're in a um, virtual um, there? Yeah, um, I think it is. I think it's hard because it, I know it's hard for me because I have a lot of things going on in my computer, and sometimes you get the little email boxes that come in and your eyes shift here and there. So I don't, um, especially if my, my boss and my son, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> you don't want to not answer. So I'm not as eye contacty as I would be if we were in the same space so that you know there are things that happen. Um, background, you know, they, they don't distract me too much unless there's movement, you know. So I, you know, yeah, I'm not a big, like I, I, I mentioned to you, you might see my Chihuahua walk across the screen, but you know, so that is a distractible item. But yeah, always make sure if you can, you know, that your roommates you know they have much follow up and, and give you as much quiet time as you can. That's always a good bit of advice. Great. How do you prefer students submit um, their resumes when attending a fair? Yeah, um, I like to use the chat feature when I'm on with the student. Um, so I will make sure that I've got our web address there. Um, any other um, links to where they might find a particular job posting? Because there are a couple different ways into um, employment with us. Um, but yeah, share it with me. I will share my contact information with you, and then as soon as you can, share your resume out with me. It's preferred. And 
can also maybe in the subject line or somewhere in the body of the email, let me know what it was you were interested in. Right. So if we talk very specifically about a position, you know, just like following up on the X Y Z position that way I know how to categorize them. And this is my final question. What is one piece of information you'd like to leave students with as we end our time together today? Um, even though, you know, I don't think anybody loves um, meeting new people or engaging and in, in trying to, to approach a student, whether it's in person or always, you know, some people are better at it than others, but do it. You know, it's really worth it. Take a look and see who or what's going to be at your event, you know, and schedule as many opportunities as you can to get in touch with someone. You know, we, uh, the students tend to know each other, you know, so maybe if we don't have an opportunity, you know, we may know um, that does have an opportunity, or, you know, we, we try to be as knowledgeable about uh, our field as possible. And so it's really interested in um, picking our brains, you know, engage with as many of us um, as you can. Is there one hot tip of the day that you would recommend for a virtual job fair? What's the hottest tip? What's happening? <laughs> Um, compliment, no, no, it's not a hot tip, that is. Um, but, but um, maybe uh, feel a little live in the interview. Sometimes I'm like way animated because that's just a part of my personality. Um, but, you know, sometimes I'll get a student that, you know, and it, I'll still be animated, but it'll be a little harder for me. <laughs> so, so I would say a hot tip, maybe, you know, just be yourself and, you know, it, you know, I prefer humor and I like to smile and um, if I you know, crack a joke, you know, pretend to laugh. Um, and I might be able to get you a job. Go ahead. You never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Whatever it takes to make it work, right? Well, if you don't have any other tips to provide us today, I would like to thank everyone for attending the virtual job fair tip workshop. Um, and thank you very much, Kelly, for taking the time out to share some tips and some information with us today relative to your company and your organization. Um, and for those students who are attending this event, um, if you have any further questions or you would like additional information relative to um, Kelly and Allegheny County DHS, please reach out to our offices and we will provide you with the contact information. Thank you again for attending and have a good day. All righty. So as you can see, some tips that Kelly had for us today um, is um, definitely do your research, prepare an elevator pitch, invest in a suit, be inquisitive, and schedule as many opportunities as you can to get in front of an employer. So those are some great tips that Kelly provided for us today um, and that you should take note of. Do we have any questions in the chat room at this time, Rhonda? Uh, not yet. If you do have any questions, please do type them in and we will certainly address them. Um, I did drop a few uh, links in the chat as well. And these are specifically for Handshake, but I think a lot of the tips that they provide on Handshake would apply for any virtual fair and any app that you're using uh, for the virtual fair. So how to prepare your elevator pitch, how to prepare questions, and there's a great video too, um, just how to, um, you know, rock your handshake virtual career fair. So, uh, so definitely check those out, some great tips in there. But uh, does anybody have any questions? I see Chrissy. I do. So what is the format for our virtual fair for the, um, the, the fair that's on, uh, that we're hosting the um, human services fair? Are we doing like one-on-one -on -one or group sessions so that students know how that will go? Yes. A, a good question, Chrissy. Um, and, and I might ask you the same for Westpacs, but uh, for the social and human services fair, there are definitely the options to sign up for group sessions or one-on-one -on -one sessions. So um, I would encourage you if you just want to learn a little bit about an organization, you're not sure if you're interested in them, um, a group session might be the way to go because um, those typically have at least a few students in them and the employer is sharing information about their organization and what types of opportunities they have. 
Um, typically, even after you attend a group session, if you decide you're interested, you can still sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session later with that employer. So that's typically um, something you can do at a virtual fair. Um, if on the other hand, you know that you're interested in an organization, then I would encourage you to sign up for the one-on-one -on -one session. That will give you time, you know, usually seven to 10 minutes with the employer to ask some questions. They may ask you a little bit about your resume. And in that case, it's really important to have your resume uploaded through whatever app um, they're using for that fair. So if it's Handshake, make sure your resume is uploaded in Handshake. That way the employer can actually see it ahead of time. Okay. So Chrissy, does that provide a little bit of context? Yeah, and I just wanted to make sure that students are aware that, you know, as Rhonda mentioned earlier at the beginning, to make the most of the virtual fair, you do need to schedule times to meet with those employers. And that's what's, that's that connection, because just registering for the fair actually doesn't get you to attend. So you do need to schedule a time to meet with them. And whether it's the one-on-one -on -one sessions, so you can have that conversation, or, you know, the group sessions where they're doing more presentation style and you can, you know, ask some questions that way. But either way, you want to make, make sure to schedule those times to meet with someone. Absolutely. Um, David is asking a great question. So for virtual fairs uh, and interviews, would you recommend the full suit, um, including the jacket, or would a button down and tie work? Um, you know, I think it, in some cases, that's personal preference, but I think in a virtual environment, most employers are okay with the button down and the tie, which David, I see you're wearing right now. So um, I think that is fine. Um, I have heard, you know, both, both ways. Um, do you dress professional all the way or from the waist up? <laughs> I have heard very few employers who are um, asking candidates to, to stand up to see if they have gone full professional or not, but hey, it never hurts. So um, I, I would probably encourage you, you know, um, if you go with the button down and tie, also wear nice slacks instead of gym shorts. <laughs> I would like to add to that, that even when you're doing a phone interview, we, we tell you to dress professional because it makes you feel professional. It makes you feel more confident. So if um, having that full suit on is going to make you feel confident in that interview process, um, meeting with that empl employer, I would recommend that you um, do the whole suit. Any other questions? Um. So uh, David had mentioned there's an employer who had no time slots, but from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, so it sounds like um, there was no specific time to sign up for. And what might be happening there, David, I'm assuming, and Chris, you can confirm, there may be some employers who have also done what some students are doing, which is register for the fair, but have not yet scheduled their, their time slots. So just keep checking back. Um, that's one of the things that uh, the career office staff is doing with employers is reaching out to them and making sure that they know they have to schedule their time slots as well. So if you see, you know, a couple days before a fair, an employer has not yet created their schedule, please do reach out to, to us, um, to me. Um, my email is gifford at calu.edu. Um, or call our career center at 724-938-4413. And we will definitely reach out to that employer, but we're keeping track of that to make sure employers know they have to have their schedule on there as well. So just keep checking back. David, does that answer your question? Okay, good, good questions. Just one piece to add with that too, that on the day of the fair, just in case they should have them posted well in advance, but just in case um, you can still schedule time slots or you know, reserve your time slot the day of. So even if you decided, like Rhonda mentioned, you attended a group session and you think, hey, I wanna talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, if there's time slots still available, you can schedule that day, the day of, I think they up to one hour in advance or you know, up to the you know, an hour prior to the start time. I know for the Career Fair Plus app, I'm not sure for Handshake, Rhonda, if you wanted to check on that, but for sure, you could still schedule that same day as well. Yep, absolutely. One other thing we should mention, um, and I apologize if I missed this, but most fairs will have a Zoom room or some type of room where you can 
check in during the day if you're having any questions or um, any technical issues. So um, you should see that on the fair information that is that is sent out to you when you register for the fair. Look for that Zoom link. Don't hesitate to pop in that Zoom room the day of the fair if you have any questions. Great. Um, I don't see any other questions right now. Emma or Chrissy, any other last tips? Um, no last tips for me. Um, Chrissy, anything for you? Thank you. So in closing, we ask you to please connect with us on our following social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you could please connect with us, um, we would be, um, Chrissy, you, you have? I just, Ron, I don't know if you call the chat, but um, yes. ask, okay. Yeah, About absolutely. Um, and you know, I'm so glad you asked this, uh, uh, David. Um, we do have someone looking over resumes. We have lots of people who can look over resumes part of the fair. So um, if, uh, uh, you're not already on Handshake, I would say jump on Handshake. Um, there is an option to schedule something called a Resume Express appointment. And um, that is a one-on-one -on -one resume review um, appointment. So definitely jump on that. If you see those times are filled, then definitely schedule an appointment with your career coach. And that will automatically pop up in Handshake if you if you say, you know, um, you'll see career coach appointment, it will link you up with your career coach. Okay. One other thing you could do is simply upload your resume on Handshake and someone will automatically review it. Um, that's probably, I would say, the last option because you'll get a review with some email feedback. But I think before you're heading to a fair, it is so awesome to have that face-to-face um, resume review through an appointment. So I would, I would go for the resume express or an appointment with your career coach first. And last option would be just upload your resume on handshake to get that email feedback. Okay. And I see Anaya, Anaya she had her resume express appointment yesterday. So awesome. Uh, <laughs> thank you for doing that. Anaya. I, I hope it was helpful. Um, just, you know, give you the confidence that your, your resume is showcasing you the best way possible. Great. All right. If there are no other questions, I would like to thank you for attending today's session and good luck with the upcoming virtual career fairs. Um, please put into place those top tips for virtual career fairs. Thank you and have a good day. Good luck. Stop recording, Rhonda. I did. All righty. Let me make sure. Yep. Okay. Hey, thanks, Emma. Thanks, Chrissy. <laughs>